Um, we like to call this kind of a quick sauce because it doesn't cook for very long, maybe half an hour. I am here today with my beautiful <laughs> niece Claudia who has come over to cook with Auntie, hang hey with Auntie, drink wine with Auntie. Yes, always. <laughs> Later we're going to make gnocchi, mm -hmm. which is another reason she came over. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> This is basic light tomato sauce. In Italy, we would call this sugo. Right. Um, a gnocchi um, or a light pasta dish. This is what you want. You don't want anything too heavy handed. <laughs> Let's show them how to make the sauce and then yes. get on to the gnocchi. Yeah? Yes. Cool. Okay. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I'm going to put olive oil in my pan that's on the stove here and I'm going to turn my flame down because I don't want it to burn. You don't want your oil to really smoke too much. What I have is chopped garlic here and you can put as much or as little as you like. Don't be afraid of the garlic, whatever you do. What garlic is this, would you say? This is about, oh gosh, this is about six or seven cloves of garlic okay. um, for a good sized batch of sauce. So um, you see how it's quickly heating up and getting very fragrant. This is the part that you don't want to walk away from. You got to really watch your garlic, right, Claudia? Yes. What happens if you burn the garlic? You have to start over. You have to start over. <laughs> Don't try to get by with burnt garlic because you will have yucky food. Um, so what I'm using for sauce in this um, is some San Marzano whole tomatoes. I'm using some um, uh, strained tomatoes or pureed tomatoes because mm -hmm. I want this to be mostly smooth. As soon as um, the garlic starts to turn just a little bit, um, not even golden, pale, 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 changing color and that's when you want to go and add see see how it's kind of that's it that's as far as you want it to go now i'm adding my tomatoes into the pot which will cool everything down and stop the garlic from continuing to cook and give it a good stir just to make that happen but you can see that's what you're going for with the garlic i like to use really good san marzano tomatoes um, either chopped like these came out of the can as in a chopped up pulp um, I also use whole ones oh. now these are crushed mm -hmm. and I also have a can of whole as you can see they're the big plum tomatoes so um, what I do with that is basically just take um, where did it go? Potato smasher. Yeah, <laughs> potato smasher. And that's what I use to smush them up. See, it just takes a few seconds. Smash up the tomatoes. Like I said. A good, nice, hearty pinch of salt. Yes. We're going to go with some turns of black pepper. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think the biggest problem that people have when they're cooking is they're afraid of salt for some reason. Yeah. Now, of course, if you're on a salt-restricted diet, then you do what you need to do. Now, I just started with about a teaspoon's worth of salt, but you're gonna taste this as you go. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. So, you know, give it a chance to kind of start cooking and heating through, and then taste. Always taste, taste, taste your food, you know? You don't ever need to put salt on the table in a shaker because if you've seasoned your food properly, um, there's no need for that. This is fresh basil from my garden, and it's been washed. And look at the size of those leaves. Aren't they beautiful? It smells so basil. good. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure if they made perfume out of basil, I would wear it. <laughs> I just tear the leaves. I like to put basil in when we first start the dish right. and then, and then the end. a little bit at the end because at the end you've got that bright fresh yeah. basil. There's this misconception that Italians cook everything with tons of oregano, which is not true. Yeah. Uh, so um, we even talk about oregano. <laughs> um, most important thing, use really good quality tomatoes, really good olive oil, 
fresh basil. You don't compromise, as you can see, there's only a few right. ingredients in it. Exactly. Let this cook for half hour, 45 minutes. Of course, then if you're from back east, people argue about whether it's sauce or gravy. Most important, sauce will stick to the bottom of your pan, which is another reason to use a really good heavy Dutch oven like this because it's less apt to happen. But you wanna turn your heat down and let it bubble. Um, we like to call this kind of a quick sauce because it doesn't cook for very long, maybe half an hour. Gravy is, I believe, what you put on Thanksgiving turkey. It doesn't matter, call it whatever you want, but cook for your family and have fun and invite somebody over, that's all, right? I like that. So, we are going to let this cook and we're gonna move on to some other things yeah. and we'll come back to it when it's done, yes? Cool, yes. yes. Basically, I'm right now ricing my two pounds of potatoes uh, that have been boiled. I boiled the potatoes in salted water, unpeeled, and then while they were still warm, I peeled them up. And it really works a lot better to peel them when they're still warm, uh, or I should say to rice them when they're still warm, because see how easily they go through the ricer when they're warm? When they get cold, not so much. <laughs> Um, potatoes make the gnocchi very, very tender and light. That's what you're going for with gnocchi. You don't want little hard gut bombs. You want little light pillows of goodness. <laughs> so, what I'm doing now is I'm spreading my potato mixture out onto the countertop, my work surface, my clean work surface, and I'm getting the last little bits out of the ricer, and you can see that made quick work out of ricing the potatoes. Now I am going to add the rest of my ingredients, little by little. What I have is, and this is, there's no um, non-messy way to do this. You just gotta get your hands in there and get it done, okay? Don't be afraid. Here's just as some salt, and I'm just gonna sprinkle a small amount of salt on my potatoes, not a lot. You don't want them to be bland. I have 11, about 11 ounces of a double zero flour, which is super fine flour. You can find at a lot of stores now. If you can't find double zero flour, regular um, uh, all-purpose flour will be okay. That's just fine. But if you can find the double zero, all the better, okay? I have about three ounces of grated Parmesan cheese, which I'm just gonna mix in here like this. I have a couple of eggs, and I think I am going to go with a whole egg. Yeah, you know what, I'm going for both. There you go. Um, and you're adding the flour a little at a time? Yeah, I am. I, I have four tablespoons of olive oil here too. So I'm gonna maybe put about half of it here. And I'm going to start mixing and bringing this together. Again, it is not an, a non-messy way to do this, but it will all come together, I promise. So as you can see, all I'm doing is just bringing everything together, okay? And you can see it's kind of soppy right now. But I'm going to do my first mixing here like so. And then I'm going to just gather. And I should have grabbed my little bench scraper out of the drawer, which I will get in a minute. Now I'm going to add some more flour to my mixture. And keep bringing that together, okay? And you wanna keep folding, almost like you were making scones. Just kinda turn and incorporate all the flour into the dough. You see it's making a nice dough here. All right. I'm gonna throw the rest of that little bit of olive oil in there now. Add a little more flour. 
and come in and make that come together. See how nice that comes to a nice little soft, pliable dough. And you know, eggs vary in size, so you don't necessarily have to use all the flour you have, but if you feel like it needs it, I'll show you what we're looking for in terms of consistency here. See how easily it takes that flour. Got a little bit over here. Bring that over. Corral the flour. Okay, there we go. Doesn't take long. You don't need to knead it in a mixer or anything like that because see how quickly and beautifully this comes together. And we are just about at the right consistency here. So I had just the right amounts, I think. Very good. Now, what you don't want is sticky. I mean, obviously it's gonna be sticky in the middle, right. but you want to be well incorporated There we go. The other thing you have to think about is some potatoes naturally have more moisture than other potatoes. What you really should use for this type of application is maybe a, you know, a russet, a dark skin russet potato because they have less moisture in them. Um, I didn't have any russet, so in this particular case I used red skin potatoes. They had a little more moisture in them, which is why I'm finding that I have to add a little more flour to kind of absorb that moisture. But again, you just you just don't know until you get your hands in there, the size of your eggs also comes into play. But look at that, isn't that beautiful? This is nice gnocchi dough ready to go. I'm gonna wash up, I'm gonna scrape down the table here, and then I will show you real quickly how to roll them out. And then Sissy's gonna come along and help me roll out gnocchi, cause that's one of those all hands on deck kind of thing. We wanna get them rolled out and ready to drop into boiling water so we can have our gnocchi a la Sorrentina. Cool. There we go. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -mm. So, get to our cookies onto the cookie sheet here. Flour under or no? Yeah, they're floured enough. Okay. It's fine. I use this scraper to get them off the cookie sheet. And we don't want to have too much flour on them because then when you throw them into yeah. the water with too much flour on them, then it makes the water oh yeah funky. I'm thinking it's kind of good to do it right onto the tray because is, you don't lose because the... you're not manhandling yeah, it too much. Yeah, you don't lose yeah. the shape too much. Exactly. And if your little thing gets kind of gummed up, yeah. you can also use your scraper oh, okay. to kind of get the dough out of it a little bit. There you go. This is a bench scraper, by the way. We use these in the restaurant for everything. Scoop them up, clean them up, mm -hmm. chop them up. It's a wonderful tool. I have several of them. I remember mom used to say, fabuona, fabuona. because we would get, after a like, while, we would get lazy. Sloppy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it would be like, you know, and it would look like just a big clump, a big clump. Mm -hmm. Fabuona, you have to put the finger over it and roll it properly, <laughs> that's say. right. <laughs> because you want all that wonderful sauce and cheese and stuff to have a place to rest exactly. in those little grooves yeah. in the little cradle yeah. on the underside. 
Only Italians can get totally poetic over right? the pasta. Over pasta. Well, that's why there's so many hundreds of shapes of pasta. Yeah. People don't realize, and they have such interesting names. Yeah. Um, funny names, some of them. Um, little ears. Sabreti, Lorecchette, little Lorecchette, ears. Lorecchette, little ears. Strozzabreti means... Yeah, what is that? Um, <laughs> uh, like, it literally means priest? choking the priest. Oh. <laughs> I lost my wine. It's oh, behind you, isn't it? Yay. That does not suck. Claudia, you should taste that sauce and see what it needs. Oh, we don't get to taste. Well, oh, you can taste. <laughs> Somebody needs to taste. I want to taste. <laughs> Can I taste with bread? Bread, I was just going to say. <laughs> oh my God, remember yes. mom chasing us yes. away from the pan? Mm, away from the pan, we couldn't wait. Oh my God. It's a little hot, so I can't really tell. Okay. I feel like it could use a little salt. salt. Nothing better. Because you know, we would have uh, Sunday meals like around two o'clock on Sunday, you right. know? And we were hungry. Yeah. At the time, we were like really hungry, so we would Sneak into the kitchen and dip bread into the sauce, and no one would chase us away. Oh, yeah. She always let me have all the sauce. That well, I well, that's what they do with the grandchildren. Yes. Yeah. A couple of extra hands to do it. It goes pretty fast. See how fast we've mowed through this, Claudia? Mm -hmm. And this is a lot of gnocchi that we're making. Mm -hmm. Okay. Water's boiling. As you can see, I've added a little bit of olive oil to my water. That's so the gnocchi don't stick together. And I've already added salt to my water. You always want to cook in salted water when you're cooking any kind of pasta because otherwise um, your food will taste like shit. No, trust me. So I'm taking my gnocchi and I'm dumping them right into our salted boiling water okay and basically they're going to sink to the bottom and as soon as they rise to the top they are done so we're going to wait for them to do that but I'm gonna grab a spoon and a little slotted spoon here there we are okay Oh, look, there's one, there's always one overachiever, first one. Oh, and they just start floating right there. They okay. start to float. You want to let them cook until they float. And when they float, we're going to skim them out of there and put the next batch in. And then do you put them into the sauce or? No, not? I think what we're going to do is put them into a casserole. We're going to sauce them. Mm -hmm. We're going to put cheese, mozzarella, and uh, parmesan. And then we're going to bake them very briefly uh, until it all comes together and the cheese melts and everything's yummy. See how they're floating there now? Almost. We almost got that batch ready to go. It doesn't take very long at all. It does all. not take very long. Um, and you don't want to overcook them, right? You do not. You do not. You just want to give them a chance for the entire batch to come to float to the surface. You know, you give them a little stir to make sure there's no none of them are stuck to the bottom of the pan. And then I'm going to use my little skimmer here very gently, very gently because we don't want they're very dainty <laughs> and delicate. So we want to Drain off the water, and we're going to set them right here in this dish. I'm going to do the same with the others. Okay, and then I'm going to do the next batch. And I have enough in here. Once I have enough in here, then I'll show you what we do next. My mom Brined. used to snack, snack on these. This is the best on. snack there is. It's like the crusty. Might I offer part. you one? Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Oh, 
I got to pull it out now. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So here's our gnocchi that has been boiled uh, and drained into the casserole. Now I'm simply going to take some of our beautiful tomato sauce that we made, which is ready to go. I'm going to add some sauce. I'm going to gently, very gently, give them a toss because we don't want to beat them up. We just want them to have a little swim. Mm. Oh my goodness, Claudia, look at that. Mm -hmm. That's great looking. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. All right, so now that we've got them coated with a little bit of sauce, I'm going to just put a little teeny bit more here. And then I have fresh mozzarella here, and I have Parmesan cheese. So basically just to assemble gnocchi alla sorrentina, which simply means how they make them in Sorrento. And Sorrento is a beautiful little seaside town on the Amalfi Coast. And alla sorrentina means the way the girl from Sorrento makes them. Very poetic times. Okay, little Parmesan. We're gonna just break up some fresh mozzarella. You can use buffalo mozzarella, regular fresh mozzarella like this. You can use, um, I wouldn't use burrata because burrata is too good to, to put in here. Burrata is good eaten straight up. On its up. own? Mm -hmm. On its own. On a crostini. Mm -hmm. On top of a salad with tomatoes. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway. This is fresh mozzarella, okay? And it's creamy and yummy and delicious, and you can find it just about anywhere now. It used to be that way. You used to have to go to specialty stores to find some of these things, but that's not true anymore. So what I'm gonna do is try to give them another little toss so that some of this mozz goes down to the bottom. See that? It's starting to melt already just from the heat of the gnocchi. Alright, and then I'm going to add a little more sauce on top. I don't want to make them too saucy. Quanto basta means just enough. And then I'm going to top it with the rest. Okay. Oops, that one tried to get away. All right, and now I'm just going to dot it with the mozzarella on top. Hit it with a little more Parmesan cheese, like so. If you have some that comes already shredded, that's okay too. It stays fresher when you buy the chunk and grate it as you need it but sometimes I get lazy and I buy the shredded stuff, <laughs> which is totally fine, okay? And then we're going to just pop it with a couple more broken up fresh basil leaves for that fresh, bright basil flavor, okay? And I am going to place this in the oven, uh, 375 for just long enough for it to bubble a little bit, maybe 15, 10, 15 minutes at the most. Okay. And there we go. And that's going to be amazing. <laughs> Didi. Ma? <laughs> we got gnocchi. Si mangia. Si mangia. Check out uh, the rest of Patty's recipes at passportsandparmesan.com. Yes. And uh, like and subscribe to videos to see uh, more of her magic.
<laughs> Anyhow, check out Words, Whiskey, and Wonderlust when you have a moment because it's pretty cool. And I'm. Oh, shit. So good.